Good morning and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. It is Wednesday, December the 16th, 2020. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House. Glad you could join us again this morning. It's hard to believe that we're almost at Christmas. It's just over a week now before Christmas is here. And this week we're continuing our uh, discussion for daily devotions on Advent and the joy of the Lord is, is the theme for the third week of Advent. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, the Apostle Paul tells uh, the believers, he says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for those who belong to Jesus Christ. Joy. Joy in the midst of difficulties. Joy in the midst of adversity. How do we lay a hold of it? It's easy to be joyful always when things are going well and when it's smooth. But what about the days where we receive difficult news? Maybe about our health. Maybe about the health of our loved ones or the death of someone in our family. What about others who are facing tumultuous times with uh, their finances? This is a difficult question. According to the scripture that Paul um, penned in Thessalonians, being joyful is a choice. I discussed that yesterday uh, a little bit, where uh, I mentioned that joy spontaneously flows out of us when we experience a connection with God and we, we truly to under, come to understand His love for us, His deep love for us, that joy flows out of that spontaneously. God desires us in our spirit to know who He is and to know that we are safe in His hands. Then, when things are difficult, we have choices to make. Because it doesn't always spontaneously happen that we have our eyes fixed upon the Lord. We have to purposefully take our eyes and turn them on to the Lord. As a matter of fact, we have a choice to be thankful. And we have a choice to turn our eyes towards our Savior. Both in Jeremiah 29, 12-14, and James 4 to 8, we read that we have been invited to draw close to God. It's an invitation extended to all believers. James says this He says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. God wants us to draw close to Him. He wants us to know the love that He has for us and to come to the understanding that His love is actually the fountainhead of our joy. God wants us to have singularity of mind in regards to all of this. The joy that God brings us, it's not subject to the circumstances that we find oscillating and changing around us, nor the emotions that rise and fall along with our circumstances. Having joy includes um, good cheer and a feeling of vibrant happiness, but joy in its fuller spiritual meaning expresses God's goodness. It involves more than just a feeling of happiness. It is deep-rooted and inspired happiness that comes from faith, and knowing that God loves us and that is in absolute control over all of our circumstances. It's linked with the sovereignty of God, inseparably linked, I would say, and the promises that God makes to us in His Scriptures. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you have been saved, you are part of the family of God. You are God's child. I think it's important for us to to ponder this. 
as his children, even when we are facing dark waters. God tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, 5b to verse 8, he says this, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. My friends, remember what Jesus says about his love for his children. John 15, 9-11 As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and I remain in His love. I have told this to you so that your joy may be in, be, my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be in you may be complete. Jesus came to earth as our Savior, friends, to help us and to heal us and to give us the fruit of His Spirit living within us. I like how the Berean Study Bible says this. I often read different translations and and the Berean Study Bible brings it out very nicely. And it says this in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, And read this, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning at shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart. During the approach of this Christmas season in 2020, Many of us are facing lists of difficulties. But my friends, Jesus is not unaware of your circumstances. He is with you and will walk beside you all of the way, no matter what you are facing. So, you along with me should consider the brightness of the future that is in store for us. See, we have an eternal reward that is reserved in heaven. Jesus went to prepare a place for us. And when he comes again, he will receive us unto himself, that where he is, there we will be also. That brightness, that goodness, will you fix your eyes upon Jesus, author and perfecter of your faith? The joy set before him, my friends, was his work and the carrying out of his mission of salvation to everyone who believes, who would be his sons and his daughters forevermore. That's what brought him joy. That's what his eyes were set upon when he came to the earth. Jesus endured the cross for the joy of seeing the salvation of his children. Jesus also told his disciples in Matthew 16, 24, and 25, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For the joy set before us, brothers and sisters, We would do well to be imitators of our Lord and Savior. And rather than focusing in on the negative spin that we see happening around us in the world, 
Let us be filled with the joy that Jesus brings us in the celebration of salvation brought to us as a gift this Christmas season. After the Israelites had been set free, or sorry, after they had been exiled in Babylon, they were set free by God. God gave the Israelites freedom from their captivity. Under Nehemiah, we see Jerusalem and its walls being rebuilt. And Nehemiah said in Nehemiah 8.10, Go and enjoy food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy unto the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, after God had given them freedom, after God had enabled them to build the walls, there was a celebration of the protection and the restoration that had come as God had taken care of His children. My friends, Jesus Christ has set us free from our spiritual Babylon and He's brought us into the promised land. He's built a hedge of protection around us, a wall around us an eternal inheritance that is set before us, starting here and now with the deposit of His Spirit within. Joy, unspeakable joy. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. God bless you as you ponder these thoughts. Have a wonderful day.